This video is brought to you by Wonder Playing Cards Create Wonder. This is the Wonder Playing Cards Scarlet Edition, which was on Kickstarter not too long ago and was fully funded with over $50,000. And I don't know how long you've been in the playing cards community, but that means they killed it. Front of the tuck box has a clean white and then a red metallic ink and tons of embossing as well. Both sides say playing cards and premium quality on the sides, but we'll see if that's true in a second. The bottom has some Wonder Playing Cards ad copy. The back is a representation of the back design done entirely in red metallic ink and has tons of embossing as well. The top says Wonder Playing Cards, and the inside tuck flap says Create, Share, Inspire. The two smaller inside tuck flaps just have the W's done with the metallic ink and nothing is on the inside of the tuck box. So since that's all I can say for the tuck box, let's take a look at the cards. But before we do, I'd love to know if you would like to see a deck battles between the V1s and the V2s. Let me know in the comments below. I do wish that they would have either marked it or made it a one-way design or a hidden one-way design uh, the Gentleman Wake playing cards or anything like that. But probably my favorite part of this back design, on top of the fact that I just love red designs and really intricate things, is the fact that the shadows make it all look layered. So this one right here that goes across looks like it's higher up or closer to the screen than what this one behind it does, right? And it just keeps on descending farther and farther back, which is crazy that that can happen on just a piece of paper. Your black number cards aren't going to be anything special, but your red playing cards are freaking cool. I mean, seriously, that's absolutely sick. The transition from the darker, almost, almost black, to the center red is super cool, and it honestly makes it look like it's transitioning from here on the white, and I feel like the red behind it should be like past the playing card. It's kind of trippy, I'm not gonna lie to you. And although really technical, they actually do it on the values as well. Sadly, they don't do anything for the clubs or spades, but they also do it for diamonds. But outside of that, they're all USPC standard, which I love. The same thing is going to go for your three aces. There was a lot of time put into these court cards, and let me show you how I know. First, you'll see that there's no blue on any of the clothes, and all of the red is just like the hearts and diamonds on the number cards. Next, you'll see that instead of yellow, you actually get a gold metallic ink, which I love. After that, you'll see that every single court card is actually smiling, which is really fun. The Queen of Spades has a Three of Hearts reveal. The King of Diamonds is holding a playing card that has the same type of design as everything else where it has the faded red. Although I do think it would have been really cool to have been holding this back design. Although that was probably too intricate for USB-C to print. And this is the way to know whatever a playing cards company puts actual intent into their decks. You'll see that there's two white banners on the Queen of Hearts, and that's the same way on every United States playing cards company and bicycle Queen of Hearts. When the United States playing company was making their files, there was accidentally a little triangle on one of them and not on the other. The triangle was not supposed to be there, and it's just a way for now us magicians and people who actually play with close attention to playing cards to know when someone has just taken what USB-C did and not made it themselves. There is no triangle on these, which means they actually did it themselves. Well done, Wonder Playing Cards. And I'm not quite sure why they did this for, for the Jack of Spades, because this is the only one that has something besides a smile, and I'm not entirely sure why that is. You do get duplicate jokers that say WC marks the Wonder Maker at the bottom, and have the same gold metallic ink right here inside the box, and whenever it says WC marks or something like that, it usually indicates, like if you're looking at a David Blaine deck, that it's going to be a marked deck. And I'm not sure why they used a WC Marks type of name when it's not a marked deck. That was a bit confusing. Wish they wouldn't have done that, unless that actually was the name of the person, which then is just a really crappy coincidence. For your ad cards, you get a double backer and a blank card. And last but not least, your Ace of Spades. Now it's time to see how this deck can handle it. When it comes to how it pharaohs, that is literally every other from top to bottom, and from bottom to top, as you can see, that is every other as well. Super easy to pharaoh. And if you don't know how to do the pharaoh shuffle, I'll leave a link in the description so you can learn it for yourself. The next things you need to know about is how it's going to feel in your hands. When I say how it's going to feel, I mean if it's going to feel like more buttery, or if it's going to be more snappy, and how thick it is. So when it comes to the thickness, it's definitely a much, much thicker deck. Um, it's definitely more like a uh, B stock, so if you felt anything like the uh, Slow Hands V1, this is definitely much closer to that when it comes to the thickness of it. And when it comes to the feel, I would lean toward buttery in comparison to snappy. So snappy decks are more used for things like backdrop, where buttery decks are more used for things like under pressure, right? So definitely a lot more control, a lot more uh, dexterity with this deck, definitely a lot 
easier to maneuver, so if you're a beginner, this is going to be a fantastic deck for you. Speaking of who it should be fantastic for, as I said earlier, it's going to be great for Magicians because it does have the double backer and the blank card, and all the faces are standard enough and the back design is complex enough to where Magicians will get a lot of great use out of this. When it comes to cardistry, this really won't be for you, although you can use it for cardistry as you can see. Um, it's really not a cardistry intended deck. When it comes to playing card games or anything like that, it's going to be fantastic. And honestly, collecting would be fantastic for this deck because the Paisley design is beautiful. If you, a lot of people like reds and blues decks, and they have produced both of them now. And you're going to see a better collector's deck in a second when it comes to the deck that I'm reviewing next week, which is their Signature Edition. So if you're wanting to make sure to check that video out, you can check it out next week by subscribing and ringing the bell so you can be notified. And if you want to check out these playing cards, I'll leave a link to them in the description below. Once again, thank you to Wonder Playing Cards for sponsoring this video and sending me this deck. And if you want to check out the V1s, check them out right there in that video. Thank you again for subscribing and ringing the bell so you can be notified for next week's video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. This is CPM, signing off.